In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create an animated trend line graph like this one. We'll also talk about the important design elements of this slide, how we've simplified it down to just the essentials and how that will help your audience relate to and retain all of the information that you're gonna give them. Let's get started. From our starting screen with a blank slide, we'll go up to the design tab and open the format background pane. And then in the fill color, we'll go to more colors and we'll enter our pancake tan color, which is gonna be hex code A96F39. Next, we'll use a keyboard shortcut to show our hidden guides. On a Mac, this is gonna be shortcut control, option command G, or on a PC, it will be alt and F9. Now, when you first open the guides, you'll see we have one horizontal and one vertical guide. To add guides, on a Mac, you can simply hover over an existing guide, hold the Option key and drag, and on a PC, you'll need to right-click and add vertical guide or add horizontal guide. So let's add horizontal guides at six centimeters and negative six centimeters, and then let's add vertical guides at negative 10 centimeters and 10 centimeters. Next, we'll go back to the Home tab. We'll go over to the Insert Shapes menu, and we'll choose this shape here, which is Freeform Shape. Now we'll start at the top left intersection of the guides we just created and you'll simply click once and you'll release the mouse and you can see you can drag in any direction with the freeform shape tool. So hold that shift key to snap it along these vertical and horizontal axes. Go down to the second intersection, click once more and then go to the right intersection, hold shift and click one more time and then hit the escape key to stop creating the shape and it'll lock this L shape in for you. Now in the format shape pane that pops up on the right side, we're gonna change the line color to hex code FDC296. Then under width, let's change that to four points. And under cap type, let's select round. And then finally, under the beginning arrow and the ending arrow, let's choose this round option, the last one here. Then click to deselect your shape, and we're gonna add a couple more guides to put our little tick marks in place. So let's duplicate this vertical guide and send the new one to negative 10.5 centimeters. And then let's duplicate this horizontal guide and send it to negative 6.5 centimeters. Then we're gonna add just a couple more guides. So let's duplicate the vertical guide again, place one at negative eight centimeters and one at positive eight centimeters, and then duplicate the horizontal guide and place one at negative four and one at positive four centimeters. Next, let's go up to the shape tool again and select the standard line. And let's draw a line by clicking and dragging from this intersection here while holding shift over to the intersection with the shape we've already created. Let's change the color to the same color we just used from our recent colors menu and also change the width to four points and change the cap type to round. Next, we're gonna duplicate the shape four times. So use command D to duplicate, then drag this shape vertically into place aligned here along these guides. Keep this little tick mark selected and hit command D to duplicate and then drag this new line in place between the axes and this guide here. Now, when you hit command D again, it will place the new line at the same distance and direction that we moved the duplicated line into. And it'll do that as many times as you duplicate this. So we wanna duplicate this a total of four times so that we have five of these lines and then grab the bottom line and while holding shift, drag it into place so it aligns with this guide at negative four centimeters. Now select all five of these tick marks and in the shape format menu that pops up, go to align and distribute vertically. Next, click to deselect, select one of the lines and hit Command D, then go up to the Size tab in the Format Shape pane and set the rotation to 90 degrees. Drag this first line into place so that it aligns between the two horizontal guides here and so that it aligns with the vertical guide that we've placed along this axis. You might need to zoom in to get this fixed just right, but make sure that that round cap isn't showing above the axis here. Then you can zoom back out and we wanna duplicate this eight times for a total of nine on the horizontal axis. So we'll duplicate the first one. It moves out of place. Let's drag it back into place between these two guides, make sure it's aligned with the one on the left, and then duplicate this seven more times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of these. Now let's grab this last one, and while holding shift, let's drag it over until it intersects with the guide at eight centimeters. Then click and drag to select all of the tick marks on the bottom, go to align, and distribute horizontally. Next, we're gonna draw our trend line, so let's go back to the Home tab, let's go to Shapes, and let's choose the freeform tool again. And you can draw a trend line however you want, but for this video, I've got one selected already. So when you're drawing with a freeform tool, remember, if you click once, it'll start the point, and then you can direct that line anywhere you want. So click again to place the next point, and continue clicking for each point, and you'll have all straight lines, which is ideal for a trend line like this one. 
So once you've completed the trend line you wanna draw, you'll notice we still have an extra tail. We wanna get rid of that. Again, just hit the escape key and that will lock in your shape. So in the format shape pane, let's change the color of this line to just this first yellow here. And that's gonna be hex code FFC000. Then we'll change the width to four points. We'll change the cap type to round just in case we end up seeing one of those. And we're gonna send this shape to the back. Next, let's click off of this, go back up to the shapes menu and let's insert a triangle. Draw a little triangle somewhere near the end of your trend line, select no line, and then for the solid fill, choose the same yellow color. Again, that's hex code FFC000. Rotate your triangle so that it's approximately perpendicular with the end of this trend line here. So as you can see, if we zoom in and we place this, we should have two right angles right about here and this triangle should be centered on our trend line. So just use your arrow keys to make fine tune adjustments until you're happy with it. Now with all of this set, we can probably hide our guides. So again, on a Mac, that's gonna be Control, Option, Command, G, and on a PC, it's Alt and F9. Next, double click anywhere in your slide to create a new text box and type out the word hotcake sales. Let's select the whole text box. Let's change our font size to 48. Let's change our font to Gibson Semibold. Then let's change our text color to the same color we used for the axes. And if you missed that one, again, that's hex code FDC296. Then let's center align the text box and let's go to arrange, align, and align center. Then let's bring this up just a little bit so it's just above this axis and that looks perfect. Let's duplicate this text box using command D. Let's drag it over to the left just a little bit. Let's change the font type to Gibson Medium. Let's change the size to 28. Let's select the text and change this to 5 million. And let's drag this box in place next to the left tick mark here. Let's duplicate this text box again using Commander Control D. And then let's drag this text box into place so it aligns vertically with the one above it and horizontally with this second tick mark here. Then let's change the font to Gibson Light. And let's hit Command or Control D again three more times so that all of these text boxes align themselves with these tick marks. And then let's change these numbers so they count up from one to five. Finally, let's select this top text box, the five million, and go up to the text color and change it to the same yellow that we used for the trend line. Next, let's grab the one million box. Let's duplicate it using Command or Control D. And let's drag it into place so it's centered below this first tick mark here and change this to a letter J. Then let's grab this text box and using Commander Control D, let's duplicate it again. And again, it's gonna place it at the same distance and direction that we placed the J from the 1M. So it's gonna be all the way down here. So just drag it into place so that it aligns with the text box to its left and it's centered on the tick mark here. And then hit Commander Control D repeatedly until we fill up all of these tick marks. Now let's rename each of these for the names of the month. So it's gonna be January, February, March, April, etc. Perfect, that looks great. Now let's grab this last S. Let's change this font back to Gibson Medium and let's change the color to the yellow. And finally, let's draw our syrup. Go up to Shapes and under the top section with Lines, choose this one next to Freeform called Curve. Now, if you're familiar with Adobe software, this tool works a bit like the Curvature Pen tool in other softwares. So every time that you click, you get a new point and it'll look like a straight line until you start drawing the next one. And then you'll see that it curves automatically to make these nice smooth curves for you. So let's reselect our curves tool. Let's zoom out a little bit and we're gonna draw our syrup dripping down just like we did before. So we're gonna have to put several points every time we want the curve to change directions. So this might take a couple of tries for you, but no worries, it's all part of the process. Let's draw that syrup and I'm gonna walk you through it. So we're just putting these points here. We want this drip to come right about here. So I'm making sure that we have an inverted curve going this direction, right? So now I can start to curve around the bottom and we'll click again and we'll click to end the curve and we're gonna adjust that later. I know it's not perfect right now. And we're just gonna kiss the top of the hotcake sails. And again, flare out this drop just a little bit and then click back around outside of the slide and click back to connect them and you'll get something that looks approximately like this. Now, of course, this looks nothing like the one that I drew before and we're gonna clean this up some and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So under the fill options, let's go to no line and then let's fill this with hex code 7B410F. So let's go ahead and send this to the back and then in the shape format tab, let's go up to edit shape and edit points. Now this will allow you to edit each one of those points you just clicked. So like right here, I have a tight curve that I don't really want. So let's pull this point up here. And if you wanna use these drag handles, these will let you extend how far the curve pushes from this point. So we wanna keep these fairly smooth. So we'll make sure that these don't pass the points adjacent to them. Otherwise we'll get these weird things going on like this. So just keep these fairly tight and you'll be fine. Uh, the more you play with this, the easier it's gonna get and the more used to it you're gonna get. So 
Just uh, play with these points until you see something that you like. And when you're done, just click off the shape and you're good to go. The most important parts are gonna be these drips. If you want these to really look good, you're gonna need to flare out these handles a little bit and keep this bottom a little bit centered here. And every time you adjust it, it's gonna change the shape of these handles. So it could get a little bit tedious through here, but that's okay, it's all part of the process. So after drawing this shape three or four times and moving all of these points around a few times, this is what I ended up with. These are what the points look like around these dots. So again, just very smooth and these handles are nice and tight, but they push in exactly the right direction. So just play with it until you get something that looks about like this. And lastly, right now this looks a bit flat and we can compare this to the original. So you can see how this one looks so much more three dimensional. And all we did was add six highlights. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And these are really easy to draw. Let me show you how to do it. Let's zoom into the first drip over on this left side. Let's go up to the shapes tool and let's choose curves once again. Now I'm imagining that our light source is coming from lower left. So all of our highlights are going to face that direction because that's where the light is hitting. So on this one, for example, let's start with right where I think that highlight's gonna end. So we'll just click right about here. And then I'm just gonna click several points around the edge of this circular drip. And then I'm just gonna go back across here and I'm not gonna cut it too close. This is gonna be a fairly big highlight. And we're just gonna round out the top a bit. And there we go. The shape will close once you click near the starting point. So go ahead and choose no line. Let's just fill this with white and let's set the transparency to 75%. And look at that, that looks great and it's already making it look better. So you're just gonna do approximately the same thing for each section along this syrup and add your highlights. And boom, that's it. Once you get your highlights in place, look at that, you got this three dimensional syrup going on. So while we're at it, let's select all of the highlights we just added and the syrup and group all of them. So if you're on a Mac, this is Option Command G. And if you're on a PC, it's just Control G. And now that we've got all that grouped, let's get animating. So we'll start by opening the Animations tab and the Animations pane, and then click and drag to select all of the graph elements. And then while holding Shift, click to deselect the two elements of the trend line. Then on a Mac using Option Command G, or on a PC using Control G, group them all. Then go up to your Intro Animations and choose Wheel. And under the timing, just change the duration to 1.5 seconds. Next, select the hotcake sales text and select fly in. Under the properties, choose from right and select smooth start and smooth end. Change the start timing to with previous, change the duration to a second and change the delay to 0.25 seconds. Next, select your syrup group and add a fly in animation to that as well. Change the property to from top, select smooth end, change the start timing to with previous, the duration to 1.5 seconds and the delay to one second. Next, select your triangle and add a peer. Select your trend line, add an appear animation, and on this one, change the start timing to with previous. Reselect your triangle and move it to the beginning of the trend line where this triangle is gonna start and rotate it so it faces in the exact same direction as the first segment of this line. Now it may help to zoom in and drag the triangle onto the line at first so you can see whether or not you have 90 degree angles here. So I need to bring mine up a little bit to the left there, maybe a bit more. So just play with this until it looks right and then bring it back to the beginning so that it covers up just the first part of this line, but it's still behind your graph axes. Once you're happy with your triangle placement, zoom back out, go up to path animation and add draw freeform. Click starting in the center of your triangle and follow the exact path of the trend line clicking at each one of the corner intersections where it changes direction, just like this. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but the closer you get it, the better the final animation is going to look. And then end just past the end of the trend line at the top. And once you're done, again, you'll still have this tail. So just hit escape and that'll complete the trend line. And then you'll see your arrow follow it, but your arrow doesn't change directions. That's okay, we're gonna fix that. Now, before you click off of the triangle animation, just remember to change the start timing to with previous and change the duration to four seconds. Now re-click on the triangle out in the field and remember, if any of these animations on the triangle are selected, you're gonna overwrite them. So make sure you click the triangle in the field and that none of the animations are selected before you add the next one. Go up to the center section and add the animation spin. Under property, change from 360 to 80 degrees and choose counterclockwise. If you've drawn your own trend line, these angles will be different and that's okay. Just make sure that you find the proper angle to keep it on the line. Then change the start to with previous, change the duration to 0.15 seconds, and change the delay to 1.15 seconds. Now, as you can see, for some reason, occasionally when we add these animations, this path animation moves off of the trend line. So if it happens, just reselect the triangle, reselect the freeform animation here, and then use the arrow keys to move the triangle back into place until it realigns with your lines, and that'll fix the issue. 
Don't know why it does that, but it does. Now re-click on the triangle again to select it. And we've just added one spin animation here with that delay and angle that's going to turn it up into this segment. So if we play from our freeform animation, we'll see it goes down, proceeds up, and then turns the corner. Uh, right now it's a little glitchy because we're not playing through the whole animation. It's not rendering completely, that's okay too. So reselect the triangle, and now we need to make the turn from this segment where it's facing up to this segment where it's facing kind of down and to the right. So this angle here was about an 80 degree turn. See, it wasn't quite 90 degrees in. Now, if we go past this line here and look at the angle between this line and this line, if we're turning from facing this direction to turning over here, it looks like that's gonna be about 75 degrees. So we're gonna click on spin again, and under property, we're gonna keep it clockwise this time, and we're gonna change the angle to 75 degrees and see if that gets us there. Then we're gonna change the duration to 0.15 seconds, and I'm using that duration because it makes the spin happen very quickly, but it's not so quickly that it's an abrupt and harsh turn that would throw the audience off and be jarring. And then the delay here is 1.9 seconds, and this is really really just a trial and error best guess thing. Uh, since we have smooth start and smooth end, it's impossible to calculate exactly how long it takes to each of these turns. So we just do it until it looks right. And then again, make sure that this is with previous and I forgot to do that first. So if you do that, it'll eliminate the delay. So make sure we put the delay back in. Always remember to do your start timing before the delay or it will erase your delay. No problem, we've fixed it. So let's go back to the path here and see if we've nailed this. So we've got our first turn, second turn, yeah, even though this is glitching out a bit right now, that looks about right. So let's select our triangle again. And now we need to turn the corner from this segment to our final segment. So let's add a spin. And this one looks like a little bit less of a turn. I'm gonna say that's about 64 degrees. So we're gonna put 64 degrees. And this is gonna be counterclockwise because we're going back towards the left. The start timing is gonna be with previous, didn't forget this time. Our duration is gonna be 0.15 seconds as always, and our delay is gonna be 2.4 seconds this time. And now if we play through these motions again, this should nail it. Perfect, perfect, and perfect. That looks terrific. Lastly, we need to animate in this trend line. Now you could use something like a wipe animation, but the problem is we can't do a smooth start and smooth end on a wipe. So the exact timing of this wipe in would be very different from the path that this triangle is traveling. And so it wouldn't look like this arrow is creating the line. So to get around this, we're going to do a reveal of this line and we're gonna have something covering the line that moves at the exact same pace as the triangle, making this very seamless. And this is actually one of the easiest parts. So let's zoom back out. Let's go back to the Home tab. Let's click off so we don't overwrite anything. Let's go to Shapes and let's choose Rectangle and just create a big rectangle that's about the same size as the graph in here. And now you're going to rotate the rectangle. So the rectangle aligns approximately with this first segment of the line. It doesn't have to, this just makes it a bit easier. Just make sure this rectangle covers the entire trend line and then go ahead and send it to the back and then select your trend line and send it all the way to the back so that it's behind the rectangle. So the rectangle is behind everything except it's covering the trend line. Now grab this rectangle, zoom all the way in and then drag this rectangle until the corner of it aligns very close to the front of this triangle. You want the corner of this rectangle to overlap about where that green arrow for the start point on the triangle is. So if it's right there, you are golden as long as it's covering this line. So we need to bump ours down a little bit, make sure it's covering that line. And let's go to the format shape pane. Let's choose no line here to make sure it still covers and that looks good. So now we can take the solid fill on this rectangle and we can change it to the same color as our background, which again was hex code A96F39. Then we'll zoom back out Click off, make sure that this is covering the entire trend line. Select the yellow triangle. Uh, sometimes it's a little hard to click on and that's fine, just keep trying. Go back to the animations tab, go to the animation painter and paint the animations onto the rectangle that you just created. And then in the animations pane, make sure that you get rid of these spins. So the rectangle will grab the path and all the spins and the appear. So we just want the path animation. So let's select all three of these spins, get rid of them and let's select the appear and get rid of that too. So now we just have the path for the rectangle. So we have these two appears for this triangle and for the trend line so that they aren't showing before they're ready to move. And so that way we also don't have to do anything weird with this rectangle to try and get it to hide any parts of these while the rest of the graph animates in. So we don't have to hide the triangle or the trend line. Once these appear, they start moving 
And this rectangle, since we've copied the animation, is gonna move at the exact pace and on the exact same path as the triangle. And since we overlapped the edges of this rectangle and the triangle, it's going to be perfectly seamless as it reveals the trend line. So let's play our slide and see how we did. Nice, look at that syrup pour in. That's so beautiful. All right, here goes the trend line. And it guides through the whole path and seamlessly goes to the end. Look at that, we nailed it. It's so smooth, let's watch that again. It just looks like that arrow is drawing that line on the screen. You can do that with any trend line. You can set the trend line so that it starts at different points. So you can click through each point and have the arrow guide it. There's so many things you can do with this, but it's gonna make your line graph presentations so much smoother and so much better to look at. So let's watch this back through real quick. So I love the wheel in animation and the fly in, but it's really the syrup dripping in that sets the mood for this graph. Even if you took away the title, this intro immediately tells your audience that this is about hotcakes or pancakes as you might call them. You see the pancake color scheme and you see the syrup just flow in and it just makes your mouth water. It makes you think about pancakes. Try and do this with any data that you're presenting. The more you can incorporate the subject matter seamlessly into the data without having to call it out explicitly, the better presentation you're going to have and the less overwhelmed your audience is going to be. Since we've called out hotcake sales in the title, and we've got this whole hotcake menu here, I don't have to say on the left side, hotcake sales in dollars. You know that these are dollars because you see 1M through 5M and you know that this graph of sales is probably going to be your amount of sales over time. Your audience is smart, they can figure that out and you're wasting space, crowding their mind and making them get more distracted the more information you put on. So by having these simple numbers and then just the abbreviations for the months, they can figure out where we are in the year and how much has been sold without you ever having to tell them explicitly. This is a great example of simplification and it's really going to help you present your data better. Thanks for watching today, guys. If you liked this video, please click that like button, hit subscribe, and click that bell to get notified of all the content I put out. In the meantime, have a good one and I'll see you next time.